Ba 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 ba. I'm dreading it. <laughs> That's how I felt last night. Well, and in this episode, Cody changes his mind. Ramen fake cries a lot, and even makes a couple of drips of water come out at a certain point. And we change our whole opinion about her. No, no we don't. This might be the most painful episode that I've watched in a long time. It was, out of the, what, 43 minutes or whatever, probably 36 of them were focused on a conversation between Robin and Mary. Uh, where it, it wasn't, it was just, it was all pretend. It wasn't, none of it was real. Robin came with an agenda of what she wanted to say, and Mary made good points and bad points. Mary is the ultimate middle of the road. She'll say something, I'll be like, yeah, Mary, and the next thing she'll say, I'm like, what are you talking about? So this is season 18, episode 5, when the going gets tough, the tough go on TV to complain about how hard their life is, even though they make a ton of money from just being on TV. No, that's not the full title. Before. This, I mean, this was not, it did not feel like an episode. It just felt like a Robin nag fest. Well, you said on, on our walk this morning that it reminded me of one of those like extended cut scenes where they're like, you want to see the whole conversation between Robin and Mary? Go over to our website. And, and Well, what I said was it's like back in the day when we had DVDs and like, under the section that nobody ever watches of extras that nobody cares about or there was like an extended cut of this scene because I don't know why I got the whole I mean who if they wanted me to hate Robin Moore they certainly did their business you know what I mean because like one second she's like I don't know why Christine left and the next second she's like Christine's always been jealous and the next second she's like I don't know if it's jealousy and then the next second she's like I've been jealous of Christine because she got the time this one month in Las Vegas okay. So, I should say, so it starts off with Christine is over again. I like Janelle and Christine together, so I'm not complaining. But how often is Christine there? I mean, I'm guessing maybe they're every single time she comes to bring Truly to visit, they film. Because otherwise, or it's some sister-wife thing, because I don't understand It's surprising why. that he'd want to see Truly. I mean, maybe at this point... He doesn't like any other kids from any other wives. I... And I don't think he wants to see Truly. When There was an extended scene that got cut from an earlier episode where she's like, well, I'm bringing Truly. And he's like, I don't know. I might be gone for work. So if so, she can just hang out with the kids. And I was like, okay. I, but way to make her feel like a priority. Right. So um, I so anyway, my point is I like that Janelle and Christine are talking. But it does feel a little like, gosh, how much is Christine there? So, so Christine hold, hold has, on. Before we get into this. Okay. For those of you who watched the episode... I don't know if you feel like me. I'm starting to slightly feel guilty about how I talk about Robin and Cody. Don't roll your eyes at me. <laughs> because? Because after watching this full episode, maybe You're picking maybe I give them too much credit for knowing what they're saying and doing. And maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they're just simpletons. Anyway, that aside, we're going to rip into them. Let's go. Uh, by the way, if you want to watch our live reaction, like when we were watching it, we get on this computer, we film ourselves watching the episode. It's on our Patreon for levels 10 and 20, so we don't $25. Get copyright yeah. struck? We can't do it on YouTube because I put a... We cannot. I put a video up this week that had like a 15 second clip and it got a copyright claim and I can't risk my YouTube account. But that is only if you want to. You don't have to. Sometimes people are like, I can't believe you're trying to force me to join the Patreon. You do not need to join. That Speaking is fine. Speaking of simpletons. <laughs> I, if you are watching this video, which if you see this, you are, I, we appreciate it. We love you coming here. Sorry, that, that was an awkward. <laughs> <laughs> we enjoy you watching this video with us. We Join us on our OnlyFans. <laughs> we enjoy your comments, all of that. We, we do scan most of the comments. I really intend to like sit right down. Right up until we just stop. I'm so tired. I'm so tired uh, that I don't get a chance to respond to all of them. But a, a lot of them I try to. It kind of depends on like when I have five minutes of free time because I have two other jobs. So C Janelle wants to add something to the apartment. So they ask Christine about where she got some enormous bean bag. Christine's like, I hate it. Come take you know, Let me bring it to you. She wraps it up. She rolls it in. She wraps it up. That... I'm get, well, That's odd, right? Like, who wraps a beanbag in cellophane? I mean, maybe she hadn't unwrapped it for moving? 
Oh, you're so smart. There's that possibility. The other option is that she is like, <laughs> I cannot pick this up. So the only option is to roll it to my car. But but based on how it was wrapped, it, it really does seem perfect like sense now that that they wrapped it for moving. But we'll see. So she comes in. She brings this this this. Um, I saw someone comment somewhere where they're like, that damn Christine. Why doesn't she just mind her own business and stay out of Savannah and Cody's life? And I was like, she is. And I'm like, <laughs> man, the history of bad takes. You don't have to like Christine. A lot of people don't. Don't. She's not their cup of cup of tea. That's fine. She's not a saint. She's not. We're not trying to get on this. But uh, that's 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 just ridiculous. So she brings it in. Um. I don't. Know, I don't know what all my notes are. So anyway, so she starts hinting Janelle. You know, the person next to me in the townhouse is moving out. If you guys wanted to. And Janelle kind of surprised her by saying, you know, if Savannah wasn't already in school and happy, I would consider it. Um, good for her for considering her children's needs, unlike Cody. Well, and but, her own. She needs community. Right. And you, what you said was, uh, it's nice that she's wanted by someone. Like, <laughs> even if she's not going to move, the fact that Christine's at least, like, hinting that she would like her to move has to mean something. Is like, oh, you mean someone in the world actually wants to spend time with me other than people I have birthed? That must be nice. It must be nice to be chosen by someone. Um, and uh, so there's there's kind of that aspect. And this is what, let me get back to it, my frustration with them being so far behind. Because there was a part of me who goes, oh, maybe Janelle will work, move to Utah. But then I go, oh, she hasn't. And it's a year and it was two years later. So clearly she's not moving to Utah anytime soon. But I'll tell you what, Janelle... Just it seems done. She seems 100% done. She's just kind of like, I just don't see how we come back from this. It's really interesting to me because the theme of the episode is jealousy between wives. And I felt like Mary and Robin were really pushing to make it as though Christine always had more and she just never appreciated it. And then Janelle and Christine both say essentially the same thing, which is, Rob, Cody has catered to Robin more, and what Christine says is, it bothered me. What Janelle says is, it didn't bother me. But they both agree that it was uneven. Mm -hmm. um, and then also, Mary got the shaft. Both of them said that. Well, I mean, that's what's ridiculous for me, is to Mar for Mary to take the side of, no, actually, Robin didn't get more, more time, when she, by far... I mean, I feel like when she was in, when she was in Vegas... I feel like she made a comment about people are going to see... We haven't gotten to this point. It's going to be the next two In seasons. In our rewatch. We're doing a rewatch on Thursdays. You're welcome to join us. They, it does appear two weeks early on the Patreon, but you can just watch it on YouTube. We're up to season four. I think we're at season four, episode four on the YouTube, and season four, episode six on the Patreon. But um, we're doing a rewatch. It's been really enlightening. We haven't gotten to this point, but I feel in my memory that there was that Mary basically said, "Yeah, Cody's spending an uneven amount of time with 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 Robin." And one of the big takeaways that I have in this episode that you kind of need to carry is how bad was Mary's relationship with Cody already? Oh, we hear some about that later. Well, that she doesn't see that Robin made it worse. I mean, because we all saw it. We thought Mary's been delusional for eight years, but it turns out it's more like double that. Also, if you're really into our recaps, we recap 90 day oh, fiance stuff. So, please. I mean, if you really like us, you can watch that too. People have mentioned to us that they had no idea that we did 90 day fiance, and I was like, please come join us for 90 day fiance. We do 90 day fiance, we've done seeking brother husband we've done seeking sister wife we've done i mean we we've we've done real housewives project runway ink master um, also you write books i, I write books i have lots and lots of books i have about 25 of them they're all of my books right now are mysteries they're available on all your favorite book vendors online as ebooks most of them about half an audio books as uh, paperbacks just search my name nikki haverstock but i was going to say is please join us for the other recaps i'm trying so so hard to build a 90 day fiance audience and if you watch those you're my favorite viewers <laughs> so thank you to those of you all five of you so thank all you 14 this time 14 we're going <laughs> up in numbers okay so we get into it with christine and, and janelle and i don't know how much of this is redone for the camera i'm going to try to be fair which is i think the 
Mary Robin conversation was for the camera. I think the Christine Janelle, I mean, it's all reality show. It's all for the camera. So this is probably take five. But, uh, so I don't know how much of this Christine knows. It does seem to me as though she is saying, like, I'm trying not to get into it a lot. There might be a little bit of the producer saying, hey, can you kind of not discuss some of the family stuff a whole lot, if possible, off camera? I, I don't know. But, um... But they're, Christine's kind of teasing Janelle about moving. She's like, and Janelle's like, you know, Salt Lake City does have a lot of people that I used to know. And Christine's like, and people you do know. <laughs> and, um, you know, but Janelle's pretty serious about being done. To me in this scene. And she does mention that Savannah uh, did not hear from her father. And Savannah says, I have not heard from Dad wait, wait, since wait. my birthday. And birthday is in the beginning of December. Dever and it's now it's mid-January. Of... The year of our Lord. 2022. 2022, okay. Christmas 2021. We're now in January 2022. Someone pointed out it's been less than six weeks and we're on episode five. At this rate, we're going to keep running through. But what I was going to say is I really wish, I heard they're going to try to do a full year. I wish they would do a year and a half. They would do like a 30 week episode, 30 episode season and get us somewhat caught up because it takes a lot of the oomph out of it when you go... Like at the end of the episode, Mary talks about moving, about moving her business, but she's not moving. And I'm like, well, I already know she, she moves about a year after this, you know. Um, so uh, Janelle's talking about how they wouldn't, she wouldn't get a divorce, she'd get a release. And she's not really sure if she's going to do that. So she just considers herself separated. But the way that she's using separated is similar to the way that Christine used the word divorce. So when Christine said... I we're not legally married. I can just say I'm divorced and I'm divorced. I feel like if we just swap the word separated with divorce, that's exactly what Janelle's talking about. As far as Janelle's concerned, she's done. She's not interested in getting back. She's she does open the possibility that she would be open, but only if they got it all new. She said she didn't mind that he spent more although it kind of bothers me that she says she doesn't mind that he spent more time with with um Robin. Because her kids felt neglected. So it felt like a little bit of like, hey, I don't need it, but you need to come over and hang out with the boys. A little bit of that. Um, uh, but I forgot my point. <laughs> oh, but she said if we were to restart this, it would need to be all new. All new barriers. Like, I'm not going back to what I had. I was willing to continue on in it. But he's blown that to smithereens, so I'm not interested in going back to that, where he just neglects her for long periods of time. She's like, if we wanted to start all new, which is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Sorry, Janelle. I mean, this guy, this is, this is like saying, oh, that shoe that the nail went through and poked me and have never fit well and left me with blisters. But I'm willing to try again if we repaint them. It's like, no. <laughs> like, this is, this is broken all the way through. You gotta let, you gotta... You gotta deal with this. Um, so then, anyway, they go into this whole thing. Jeanette, uh, Ra, uh, Christine freaks out. This is the video I was gonna post online that got taken down for a copyright claim. Was when Christine is like, "Oh my gosh! Oh, I cannot! Oh, uh, ooh, I cannot believe this man!" Because he heard she heard that he hadn't talked to Savannah, hadn't sent her a gift, hadn't called her on, th on Christmas. The kids came back; they didn't send anything back with the kids for her. Just totally neglected Savannah, who has not said a bad word about her father, the, I feel like she's, I mean, she's hinted she's sad and upset. Okay, I think that's fair. Well, this think episode, the biggest she said, with that kid is she's not Robbins. Yeah, well, there's nothing wrong with her, to be clear. So... But I mean to Cody. To Cody, yes, exactly. So Christine gets so mad, she's like glitching. She's like, ah, ooh, yes, urgh. And she's very much like how I do recaps. Um, so that was very uh, fulfilling to watch. Um, and she's so mad, and then Cody's like, well, they kicked me out of my home, or the space that I had with these children, so I can't see them anymore, and I don't have the emotional fortitude to reach out to her. And it's like, I mean, he's saying, I just don't care enough about my kids to make things better. But he somehow thinks he, that's like an excuse. Like, we'd go, oh, oh, you don't have the emotional fortitude. Oh, I thought you were just a weak little sissy man. That's what I thought. That's I thought I that think. you were someone who's good at procreating and bad at fathering. Well, I don't know that he's good at procreating. Well. I mean, he gets his pencil wet, Robin. He, he gets the minimum viable product. <laughs> I mean, so 
um, Christine is so mad and she's like, if Savannah wasn't here, I'd say more, but she just says, I'm really sorry. You know, she kind of apologizes for Cody, which, I mean, part of me goes, don't you dare, you just call him a rat fake. But the other part of me goes, she's trying to say what will be... What the kid needs to hear. Right. I don't, And I don't really know. I'm not a therapist. I don't know what she needs to hear. We don't have a kid of that age either, so... Right, so I don't really know, but she's like, you're a dad, you have to be a dad, you don't get to just opt out of it. And this whole, like, oh, well, the boys disrespected me. What did Savannah do? What has Truly done? What has Isabel done? Oh, we've seen that, and the boys didn't do anything either, so... I know, but I'm saying, like, he doesn't even have an excuse. He doesn't even make up an excuse. Like, well, Savannah sided with her mom. It's oh. just a matter of, like, I don't... Because Janelle said I wasn't welcome, um... I'm just not going to text my kid. I mean, this is not like the 1800s where he can't even get them a telegram. The only way to show up is by horse and buggy. Like, he can call. He can text. I assume they all have phones. They were on that text chain that Robin, you know. Blue to heck. So then we cut over to Robin. Robin goes over to visit with Mary outside once again. They but at least it's summer, right? So, you know, it's winter. So once again. There's like a foot of snow on the ground. So... Once again, we do not see Robin inside a house. We see Cody inside buildings all the time. So it does seem that Robin is the one who will not film inside a building. Anyway, comes over to Mary. This whole thing is a debacle, a travesty of TV, the most infuriating. Just like how dumb do you think we are that we're buying any of this? Or that we want to see it. Like I this could have been wrapped up all a million minutes of it in like 36 seconds. So right off the bat, Robin's like, Christmas was a tragedy for me. And I'm like, no one cares about your Christmas. Like, we just saw Savannah talking about how her da dad hasn't called her for six weeks since her birthday, did not send her a gift or anything. And then he explains to us that he did it because he was weak. I mean, I don't know what excuse that, and then immediately cuts to Robin being like, it was a tragedy for me. And it's like, boo-hoo-hoo-hoo, oh, poor Robin, it's so difficult for her. Yeah. And she's like, I'm done trying, they aren't safe for my siblings. They revisit the whole text chain thing, and Janelle's like, um, after the text chain, Robin was like, this isn't safe for my children, so they're not going to be involved. And it's like... Way to be a part of the family. And then you she's... Rat. And then she's like, that kind of ended the idea of any Christmas, like, things working out. So, um... And then Robin tells Mary all about how they have the kids over the next day and all this. And Mary's... And <laughs> Mary's like, oh. It's her full sa sad and... I, I don't know why she's telling me this. Because she does not care about you 100%. She only sees you as someone who's there to back you up. That's all she's ever seen Mary as. Oh, the other wives have problems? Oh, well, Mary will have my back. Now, if not you go... narcissist gonna nurse. So, it's just like... Well, I don't want to remind you. Mary and Cody did not invite Mary... Sorry. Uh, Mary and Cody should never be in a... Um, a sentence together. A sentence together other than they hate each other. Or he hates her. Right. Um, Cody and Robin did not invite Mary over for the second Christmas. So Mary's like, oh, I didn't even know. First of all, she says, okay, McKelty, Truly, and Isabel came over the day after Christmas. We had a second Christmas. Mary's response first is, nobody told me Isabel was coming. <laughs> yeah, Screw first response. Screw Truly and McKelty. So I don't want to hear about how she's for the kids when she literally had an opportunity there to say, I didn't know they were coming into town. But she's like, oh, Isabel, I like that one, is my interpretation of it. And then I'll point out, Robin and Cody didn't invite her over either. So later on, there's this whole thing about who Christine is and isn't inviting. And I felt kind of bad. But then I'm like, you can't even pretend... They, your BBFs there that have your back and all that don't invite you over for stuff. You don't get to complain that Janelle and Christine didn't either. You know what I mean? Like, sorry, bucko. And so they get this whole thing about, you know, where Mary, okay. Mary really pissed me off last night. But she did have some good zingers. And I was so worked up about the conversation between Mary and Robin that I'm not very objective about what Mary said that was correct. And we don't curve. 
Well, my po I'm just saying this because if people come in and be like, wow, Mary had some great things. You're right. And maybe once I've cooled down a little, you don't understand how worked up we get. If you watch the Patreon video, which once again, you don't have to do. But if you want to watch the Patreon video, there's about 30 minutes of extras where we pause it and we talk. And it takes about, the episode's like 42 minutes, and then the finished version of what we do is like an hour to like an hour and four minutes, or 58 minutes to an hour and four minutes. And we pause it, and I get so worked up. And you do too, you don't say as much. We get so worked up, neither one of us can sleep afterwards. So we take our like huge thing of melatonin, we get our like sleepy time tea, we put on a nice episode of like Bob's Burgers, we try to cool down, we wait about an hour, hour and a half, and then we go to bed. And neither one of us could sleep until like midnight or one. <laughs> and then we both woke up. I woke up at 4.30 and you said 3.30 for you? Like three. Yeah. That's how worked up we get because we get all the... Dr I, I know, I know. But when you're like, wow, what a bunch of losers. Yeah, we acknowledge that. We're not going to fight that. Here's the thing. Still don't care. <laughs> it's like, I get it. That's dumb. But I'm going to say... And so... We're, we start our energy so low, and then I have to, like, I was like, we need to get Phil Parkinson to come give us, like, a, 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 like a pep talk to do this video. Which, if you do not know who Phil Parkinson is, you need to be watching Welcome to Wrexham. It's probably the best kind of docu-series thing. If, uh, right, right up there with that other documentary, uh, What We Do in the Shadows. Yes, another great documentary. <laughs> no, uh, but... Uh, if uh, a lot of women say that they like to watch our recaps because they also force their husbands to watch Sister Wives, and so it's like, it's like, <laughs> I'm sorry, guys, <laughs> nothing I can do for you. Um, but from what I would re recommend, if you want to force your husband to watch something, watch Welcome to Wrexham. Neither one of us like organized sports, like you know, like I watch like the Olympics or like archery and other kind of sports like that. Yeah, real entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, John thinks he can get into like like car racing and stuff like that but neither one of us watch organized sports and neither one of us know very much about soccer other than we both played a little bit but it is such a good good documentary about the people of Wrexham and it's the first season was really well done and the second season just started so you should go watch that but anyway Phil Parkinson is the coach there and he gives amazing impassioned screen. speeches F laden speeches <laughs> and I said we need one of those yeah. to get us booked up for doing this so anyway um, before i get into this so yes mary had some really good zingers please remind me in the comments of the ones you liked because she did set robin straight a number of times but the way she just got dragged into to robin's complaining about uh mostly christine but also how hard everything is for robin was infuriating that 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 mary didn't say more like well yeah what about the kids I'm, i think it was really tough on them too like, man, that must be really tough for Savannah. Was Savannah invited over? Oh, she wasn't? She That's also really could sad. have pretended to be empathetic and be like, yeah, I know how hard it must have been for Janelle and Christine, because... Because it happened to me. Yeah, but no. Okay, so we're going to get into this thing. It felt like it went on for a billion years. Um, so, uh, so now, I said Mary has, my first note is, Mary has horrible judgment. Which... She should have got a little lamb, but... She has Bad judgment instead. She has terrible, terrible judgment. So first of all, ninety percent of their conversation should not be about what Janelle and Christine are doing. It would have been about Cody. Cody was ultimately the person who did all this, and all those people who defend Robin and say this is all Cody's business, perfect opportunity. This is not Christine's problem either. This is not Janelle's problem either. It sounds like he has always, always, always been bad at balancing or no. Attending to the needs of his wives. Oh, why would Always. you say something like that? And it seems like when there was three of them, they kind of sort of figured it out. It feels like a little bit like maybe there was a little bit of force, like you need to go spend time with Mary, you need to go spend time with Christine, you got to buy Mary a Christmas gift even if, if I do, things like that. And then... But he didn't. Once they got the fourth in, the fourth one in, it's very likely that even if it had been someone who wasn't Robin, he he might not have been able to do it. And it seemed like she was just the small little spark that set this whole thing ablaze. But it was already kind of a hot mess. So now, so this is whole, so Robin comes in and goes, well, gosh, now it sounds like he has always had problems with Christine from the beginning. 
And Mary's like, well, what about me? If she's has problem with Christine from the beginning, he's had problems with me from the beginning. And I was like, yeah, that's right, Mary. And then it kind of goes downhill. Um, and they talk about the family and Janelle, Christine, and Mary kind of all have a similar point of view, which is there was a lot of conflict before Robin came. There was a lot of problems, but they had figured it out because they really cared about the kids. And Mary's like, well, maybe it's because the kids got older, which in Mary's case is true because she had one child who left. Um, by the way, uh, in this episode, Robin refers to Mary's child by her old name and, and all that. I have no idea when the interview was filmed. It's likely, it's possible that it was filmed before uh, Mary's child had come out. So that, that's that, all that I'm going to say about that. Let's just assume the worst from these lovely people. Um, but like, it's funny to me that Mary doesn't even talk about her own child. Like, nobody said anything like, "Why isn't Leon here?" It was always like, "We just, we just all pretend they don't exist," which I guess might possibly be at the request, the same way that. Janelle never says Logan's name. Um, occasionally, they mention Logan at some point when Robin was going on and on and on about the fake Christmas that everybody else had and how the kids know it and are lying and stuff. But um, so or we'll get we will get to that. Someone got mad that I keep saying that, but I'm trying to do it in order, kind of. Um, and so Janelle's pretty generous. She says, you know, we got a new relationship and we went public and the whole family and then they. They didn't mention this, but I'll add, they also moved out of their house that they had had and had all this new fame and notoriety and money. And she said, we never really settled down into a new normal. That's just what happened. And that does seem to be, as an observer who has listened to their own words, that does seem to be what was happened. What, what happened. They said in every single season, Janelle would sit down and say, We've got to get back to the family. We're not getting together like a family like we used to. We used to get together as a family. And I always, at first... But it didn't matter anymore because Robin. At first, that didn't make sense to me because it seemed like they were always getting together for parties for TV. But then I thought, oh, well, they used to get together as a family, not just for parties, but like every evening. Like Janelle and it sounds like the original 12, not 13 because Truly wasn't born yet. At, at this point, but it sounds like they used to all get together for meals several times a week. And it sounds like, in general, uh, like the teenagers, I think, would, it sounded like the teenagers would hang out at Mary's house because she had the most space, and she had a teenager, and it was like a chance to get away from the little kids that were probably, if they're anything like our little kid, want to hang on you and talk to you and interrupt you and you can't do anything. Oh, we love our son. That sounded really weird. But I'm just saying, like, if, if it wasn't my son, if it was, like, my younger brother, I might feel a little bit like, let's go over to Mary's for a little bit and and hang out and stuff like that. So there's that. And then they used to have meals together because a lot of times, um, and they even said, uh, Christine would, would care for Janelle's kids while Janelle worked. And then... Um, Mary said a lot of times they would join Christine because what's what's cooking for one or two more if she's already cooking for 14. I mean, not, <laughs> not the most considerate. I mean, I didn't hear her saying like, and I cook the dessert and bring the bread and do this. It was more of like, well, Christine's already doing all this work. I might as well mooch off of her. But whatever, they were getting together a lot. Um, so Janelle really felt that there was favorited. And in, 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 oh. you, Janelle, words is hard. I'm sorry. Janelle's children felt that there was favoritism. There was an inequality of time and resources. Whew, that's a lot of big words. But what Janelle said was it didn't really bother her. She didn't deny that it was happening. She just said, I think and more or less, more or less said, Cody's a lot of trouble. So I didn't mind when he wasn't there. Is what I got from it. But, um, and then... Cody says, I never gave Robin more time. And and we all, everybody knows that's not true. And then they talk about how Janelle still really believes in Pearl marriage. And she's open to it again. But as far as she's concerned, they're separated. Now, I have a few few thoughts about Janelle and the Pearl, Pearl marriage thing. Sorry. I have to hiccup. Um, so there's a couple different things. One, it's, a, it's weird to me that she's acting like she has no other option when her own mother joined a plural marriage as probably about the age Janelle is. 
right? Maybe a little bit younger, but Janelle was an adult courting Cody when her mom met Wynn, Cody's dad, and decided to join that family. Um, so there's that option. And two, I wonder how much of this is just is just things she's saying because her religion requires it. And so she feels a little bit of pressure to say, I'm still open to it, but who knows if it'll ever happen. As sort of like a, yeah, sure, I guess I'd move back to California if I had a big job, but it probably won't happen. And the truth is, we're not planning on moving back to California. We don't like traffic. Nothing wrong with California, but we were... There's a lot wrong with California. Okay. But we don't like traffic lines... Uh, uh, crowds, people. A lot of people. So when we lived in California, I'm wrong with California. There was, there was uh, all of that thing in in spades. I finally decided that I was ready to move from California because John had been like eager to to go somewhere else, and I was like, but I grew up here, and I do, I, I love my job, I love the people I was around, I love that. Um, but I wasn't going anywhere because you'd get there, there'd be no parking, there'd be all these long lines, it was expensive, there'd be two hours of traffic to get there, all that kind of stuff. And I don't do any of those things particularly well um, as far as my anxiety level goes. So, uh, but I drove from my house to my work on just a normal street. This is not a highway or a byway. And this, I go to change lanes to make a right, and this guy, like, I could see him in my rear view mirror, he was way behind. But he sped up super fast so that when I changed lanes, he was now behind me. Um, well, and then he like jerked over lane, pulled up, rolled down his window, started screaming obscenities and flipping me off. And I like made a right hand turn into a suburb to like get away from him. And I was all shook up because I was like, that's too much for just a normal street. And I was going the speed. Like I was not going 10 miles under the speed limit. I did not cut him off. Like he made... He drove in a way to make sure that he had been wrong. And I was like, oh, maybe I'm ready to move someplace else. But I don't tell John, but I do miss it. Um, but I, yeah, I mean, but like I was never going anyplace cool and doing cool things because it would take two hours to get there and then there'd be no parking and I'd be stressed out the whole time. But I do miss it. Um, so, so, and basically Christine and Janelle, I know we're going. It's to okay. We're not even halfway through yet. Uh, Janelle and Christine are talking about how Cody was always likely to be a better sister wife to Robin. And she's like, I was, a, Christine's like, I was a great sister wife to Janelle. Um, I wasn't a great sister wife to Mary, but we know that he doesn't care about Mary. Brutal, but it is true. Cody does not care about Mary. And that is not a reflection on Mary, that's a reflection on Cody. Well... It's been for so long, maybe it is a reflection on Mary. I'm just saying, though... When are we going to get to the 16 years ago part? Because... Well, we're getting there, so, um... If your hair hasn't grayed yet, just wait. And then, uh... He, oh, this is it. This is it right here. So, this is where I started getting annoyed with, with Mary a bit, because Mary's... Because her and Robin are talking about how Christine always complained about not getting enough, and Mary's like, well, actually, this one Christmas... Cody did, got Christine all these gifts and got me nothing. And I'm like, why is that Christine's fault? Like, that sounds like a What horrible... we've been seeing for 10 years was not just 10 years. Well, it's this idea that, like, oh, you mean he's always been bad and meeting the, the, the needs and providing resources for his three wives? Yeah, we saw that. We saw that all the time. I don't get how that was that makes Christine look bad. Because or in other words, you mean he only cares about the new wife and the other ones can go to heck? Well, I don't know that it's always as clear as that. I mean, that seems pretty darn clear. Well. All the gifts for no. my loving wife and no gifts for you, peasant. No, I think I don't think that's the case. Because what, what Mary's point was is that Christine was well favored. And Christine's like, yeah, one Christmas he, he got me a bunch of stuff and got Mary nothing. And I went to him and I said, why didn't you get married anything? And he's like, well, you got her a gift certificate. And she's like, yeah, because she's my sister wife. She's your wife. You have to get a gift. My point is, Chris, Mary is trying to present this thing as like Christine was highly favored and then Robin came and she li didn't like anymore that she wasn't the highly favored wife. I think he's always been bad that with sharing resources. Bad move for Mary to, well, to present it like that. And then Mary's like, our, our relationship was always this roller coaster, and this one time I tracked my time with Cody, and I didn't track his time with anyone else, but I know that he spent less than a third with me. And I'm like, I think this is kind of the problem, because her assumption was, if he wasn't with me, he was with them. And I, I will say this about all the complaining last night. I do think it's incredibly likely that Cody's one of those guys 
who, even when he's there, is gone. Like, Oh, he, you mean like on the phone all night at Christine's house? Well, I was more going to say things like, um, you know how, like, kids, when you say, oh, it's time to clean up the dishes, they're like, oh, I have homework to do. I got to go potty or whatever. <laughs> I think Cody is that version of it. I think that even when he is at a wife's house, he's bad with his time. I will give them that, but it doesn't justify him being at one house more than the other because it's not... He's not accessible at all. At least if he's in the house, they can find him. Speaking but, of the next bad story that makes well, they go the whole thing. not look bad. Well, he goes on about how one month in Vegas, I wanted to see if Christine would stop complaining, so I stayed at her house. And Christine, and he's all like... All month. And then he's like, yeah, and, and she did stop complaining. And it's like, okay. And then... Um, one month. And then, and then Robin's like, I actually tracked his time one month. And this, to me, sounds like something they've discussed. A billion times. And she did not track his time. He tracked his time. And she noticed. Or he told her. Oh. And some people were like. Do you think it was after Truly was so sick. That he spent more time in her house. I doubt it. I, well it could be. But it doesn't. That doesn't qualify. As, this whole story. This is where I started getting so annoyed with Mary. Because I. Well I came in annoyed. About this. Because we saw it on the sneak peek. And I was like. I don't know what point you're trying to make. Because to me. The point you're making is. Cody's bad at this. He is objectively bad at polygamy, which is what Christine is saying. So he spent one month, and then Christine, Mary, and him all say, I gave her that, and then, and then Christine presents the truth, and it's like, yeah, he did spend one month at my house in Vegas, and then the whole rest of the year at Robin's. Yeah, so... Uh, Hello! And then he just, they just said, you know... He prefers his time with Robin. And he's like, the real issue is that the wives don't appreciate what I'm doing for them. And it's like, yeah, that must it's, be instead it. Instead, they're too concerned about what I'm doing for everyone. Well, when you're only doing for... When everyone right. else means Robin, everyone else is pissed. Well, and don't Shocking. worry. He has infutable proof that he was not at Robin's house more. Do you want to hear his proof? <laughs> Robin he was in his office. Robin gave him an office at his house, at her house, and a space in her garage. Now remember, Christine doesn't have any space in her garage because she converted it into a wrestling room for the boys because she thought maybe Cody would. Oh, and by the way, she negotiated more time with Cody in exchange for that. So do you think maybe that was the one month that she was over? He was over. Okay, so Robin gave him an office at her house. And a place in his garage, and he said, "Yes, I spent a lot of time in the office and in the garage, but it doesn't ca it doesn't count as being at Robin's house because they were at Robin's house." And my impression of that is a euphemism for wetness pencil. Well, my thing about that it dude is does not know work. His whole thing was, I didn't spend more time at Robin's house. I just spent a lot of time at the office at Robin's house, but it doesn't count because I wasn't at Robin. I wasn't with Robin, but I was at her house, and it's like, dude. You just admitted on TV that you spent more time at Robin's house with, like, and it, it was just because of the office. Really? Mary had a whole big, huge, empty house with one child in it and a wet bar and a bajillion rooms, which we'll get to in the rewatch when we get there. He wasn't at Mary's house. That would have made more sense. You know what I mean? Like, you don't get to say, I'm at Robin's house more, but it doesn't count because I'm at her house because she gave me an office. You know what I mean? Like, and, and this guy is not working. This guy is playing around on his phone, pretending that he works, calling his buddies about great business ideas. He likes to cosplay being a businessman. And he does, in fact, invest a lot and, of time and money into the cosplay. And husband. I mean, he's good with it, one. Of multiple wives. And then Robin goes in this whole thing, I thought Christine would open her heart to me. You know, I she's, she's awful, blah, blah, blah. Um, mm. and then he's like, okay, so then Robin goes this long thing about all of Christine's problems with jealousy, how she told Robin she was jealous, how she had these problems with, and then Robin goes, I don't know what happened to my family. I think it was pretty clear. Either Christine was always complaining to you or you have no idea what's happening, but you don't get to play both sides of it. And then, you know, Mary's a little like, yeah, um, you know, and then Janelle tells us a story we've never heard before, which is worth listening to, which is when they were looking at buying this house, 
Janelle was speaking to Robin and just said, I'm worried that taking all of this money that we have and investing it into a house for you is going to keep us from developing on Coyote Pass. And then about a year and a half later, um, Cody says to Janelle, you were really mean to Robin when she was buying this house. And Janelle's like, oh, I see how it is. I get, I get how it is. We had this private conversation and now Cody knows about it. And then Robin swoops in with, oh, that's not what happened. I didn't tell Cody about it. What I said was both Janelle and I were worried about the money and I was just trying to convince him and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, well, if we know anything, she's an angel who always tells the truth about everything. Well, she's always got some excuse about why when she says it, it was all about family. But then, but remember, Cody said she's the master communicator. And she, more than anyone, can circle the donkey and explain things to him. And so it's like this whole, you know, at some point, okay. So at some point, I can do all of this discussion about who said what, who did where. And in the end, we kind of have to go down to your gut. I trust my gut. You trust your gut. But I get why you might not trust our gut. You don't know us. You don't know if we have terrible, terrible instincts. You shouldn't trust Mary's. Mary has a ter I was going to say this earlier. Mary has a terrible, terrible gut. We have proof because she was catfished by a woman pretending to be a man. Not just a man, but like he's a millionaire and he has all these kids. And she could have easily Googled any of this stuff. And she used a voice changer. Like none of this set off any of Mary's alarms. Her own child who lived in her house was telling her the whole time, this is not a real person, they are lying to you. And she didn't believe it. So objectively, we have proof that Mary is a bad judge of character. And she cannot tell when people are lying to her. And she doesn't, she can't even really tell when people are making up stories that are so unbelievable. Juxtapose that with us always being right. Well, no, but what I was going to say is, you don't have to trust our gut, but this is something about Robin that I want to point out. From the very beginning, she has rewritten the Brown family history. From episode one, scene one, well, she actually was in was not in most of episode one. She was introduced at the very end of episode one. But episode two on, she, she has is spoken the expert on, on everything. Polygamy. She came into a family and she talked over those other women and Cody about how their family worked. And that, right from the bat, for a lot of people, set up a lot of, like, their antennas because they go, why is the person who just joined the family talking over the people who have participated in 20 years? Because she talked she's about a narcissist. How, how um, new wives come in. She's never experienced a new wife coming in. And she didn't experience it, you know, she always had an, uh, how the kids should be raised, how discipline should be done, how they handle this, how they handle that. Right off the bat, you go, oh, this is someone who speaks without knowledge um, and just makes up things that are convenient to her version of reality. And that version, that version of Robin is consistent to today, and that is part of the lens with which we interpret her behavior now, which is where when it's convenient to point out that Christine was jealous and expressed her jealousy and all that, she does. When it's convenient to Robin to pretend that she doesn't know that Christine's unhappy, she does that. There's no consistency between them. And the fact that Mary sat through this conversation and didn't vomit on her shoes is a testament to how little judgment Mary has. Now, Mary did have some good zingers in there. Um, uh, she had, I said, Janelle is not playing with the be a better husband bit. She, you know, she basically kept saying... It's up to Cody to be a husband. He wants to be a leader of the family. He needs to be dictating where his time is. And he has basically always been bad at it. Is kind of what I got from it. Is that Janelle um, was, sounds like she was always pretty easy. Christine was a little bit like, can you be more engaged? Mary, I think maybe Mary and Christine played this game a little bit. Uh, we heard a lot about Mary and Janelle's issues. Not as much about Christine and Janelle's issues. But it popped up like... When Maddie gave birth, I don't know, I thought Christine was a little out of line. Christine was also a little out of line with the whole, like, oh, so we're not going to be, it's not going to be a family business if we didn't pay for your B&B. Christine was a little out of line. Mary's, Mary's gleefulness at Cody ripping into Christine. When Cody, I mean, if anyone should be mad at anyone, it should definitely be Cody. Cody's getting off a little too scot-free. I think that's why Janelle is always circling back to blaming Cody. And Christine's doing that a lot, too. It's saying, like, 
this is about how he designated time and he spent more time with Robin and that was his choice. Like I think she's doing a lot more about that. Whereas they're trying, Robin's trying to make it anybody but her problem. So sometimes it's Cody's fault and sometimes it's Christine's fault. And I'm pretty sure, pretty sure <laughs> that very, very soon we're going to be getting these long, drawn out conversations about how Janelle has always been awful to Robin. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just waiting for that to happen. Uh, but she's doing all this. Who could see that coming? I know. Shock upon shock. Um, and, you know, uh, oh, yeah, because this is where, this is where Christine is like, um, oh, so in order to have a relationship with Cody, I have to have a good relationship with Robin. Who has a good relationship with Robin? Mary? Well, he doesn't give a flying fart about Mary. So I don't think that's the, you know, I don't think uh, that's, that would have made much of a difference. He's just over it. He's just over his wives that aren't Robin. That just seems to be it. There's no way to win. And then Robin's doing here. I just can't figure out what happened. Why can't they just go to counseling? I don't see how any of this is a deal breaker. And they, they, they just go back with Christine. They keep coming back to not enough time with Robin. And they skip over the fact that Cody not was like. Not enough time with Robin? Sorry. Not enough time because of Robin. Okay. Okay. With Janelle, they keep going back to COVID and the boys. It's like they have one, but they leave out a lifetime of stuff. Like Christine, one of the big things was not him not going with Isabel. He wanted Isabel to go to the surgery alone. I just rewatched that clip, but I had forgotten that where he's like, well, honey, you have two options. You can wait eight months until COVID was better, which would, I'm telling you right now, would not have been sufficient. Because he doesn't care and doesn't want to pay for your surgery. Right. He doesn't care. And or they could send her alone. I believe at the time she was still 17. I, I'm not sure when her birthday is. So she might have just barely been 18. But it's entirely likely though that the um, the hospital would say no unless you have a designated person with you to take care of you. If she was 17, for sure they would not have allowed it. I mean, you can correct me, but I'm pretty sure they would have, if she was 17, they would have required a guardian with her. Um, and even if she was 18, like, they didn't just let me, they didn't, they didn't just be like, okay, bye, at the door after I had foot surgery, which was really intense. I'm going to tell you, it was very intense. But it was not a full body deflating a lung, going in through the side to correct a huge spinal curvature. I mean... My foot surgery was painful, but I can't remember. Based on, like, how much pain I yeah, had but, in my foot. But Cody said she didn't need it. It was just a vacation anyway. It was cosmetic. Or was it was it, it was cosmetic or that he was worried because it would make her look bad? I can't remember. It was something about her looks. I it, think it was both. It was something stupid. Well, I remember at one point it was like, oh, you just want this because it's cosmetic. And I think another time he's like, oh, I don't want her to have it because it'll leave her with a big scar. Like... Who cares? Who anyway. cares? Um, she's the one who has to decide that. Anyway, so he... So Robin is this whole thing, why can't they go to counseling? And Mary has a good zinger where she's like, they have to both want to go. And it's clear that Cody didn't want to. Yeah. And she kind of puts him a little in a place and Robin kind of does this like, oh, well, we're going to figure out something else. Um, and then she just, Christine's just like, he just wasn't spending time at my house with my kids. Like, that's all there is to it. Um, so, equal playing field, something about a man must be money and time. I don't know what that means. Oh, um, so I think then Mary goes into this whole thing about, like, well, it's just the kids got older and we don't need each other as enough. And I know Robin really wanted that, but we were in a different place in life and she was kind of starting over fresh. Or whatever, which I just feel like is like anytime Mary says anything that takes some of the res or, or all the responsibility off of Cody, I just feel like, man, lady, why are you going so hard for this dude who has treated you objectively terribly? Well, she chose sides and she chose the wrong one. Well, and the thing is, is Janelle and Christine both acknowledge that Cody has treated Mary badly. Robin won't admit that. She's just like, well, their relationship is in a difficult place. You mean awful? Like, you mean abandoned? You mean, like, don't go oh, a difficult place? He has said on multiple occasions, F that B. I'm done with her. I wish I'd never married her. I wish that she would just disappear out of our life. 
And but Robin's like, oh no, but I, but she still backs me up on stuff, and I can talk crap about Janelle and Christine. Um, I, I just by the end of this, I was like, I just couldn't do it. And then Robin goes on this rant. Welcome to the spin zone. So so frustrating because she's like, this is this is a cheap Christmas, and they can get all the houses they want and all the gifts that they want, but they were not there for family, and those kids know it. It was awful. Well, I mean, we know this because they were all invited and they just didn't show, right? Yeah, and they got so many gifts. Unlike, Ro I mean, Robin's kids barely got anything compared to the way that the other kids, like, and a lot of people said what's weird about her whole rant is that objectively it only makes sense if she was talking about her own family. You can get all the big houses you want, the McMansion, all the gifts you want, the motorbikes, but that's not the real, and the kids know it. And it's like, yeah, I, it doesn't make sense because they, yeah, they rented a, they rented a house, but it's not that they bought it. They got it. They they rented a house so everyone could be in it. They the kids, as far as I can tell, didn't get a ton of gifts. Yeah, like I mean, like delusional. Not the way that Robin and Christine like she said about all the food. I'm like, do you, do you mean the crepes? Like it was really weird. By the way, the crepe tradition. I had forgotten this, but people pointed out the crepe tradition was something. It looked like it was Janelle's. I'm going to do a rewatch and we'll find out soon. But the oldest girls in the family used to make crepes for all the kids. And this was a tradition. And then when the older girls left, some of the younger ones did it. So, like, their whole, like, we have crepes on Christmas thing is just something. That's not one of Robin's long-term traditions. That's something that I think it, I, it sounded, I'll have to go back and look, but it sounded like it was Christine's tradition. I'll go check. But it's just weird because Robin goes in this terrible, this long rant that kind of made it sound like she was implying that the kids, like, were, like, hooking up with prostitutes on Christmas instead of being at her beautiful dinner that she planned. They weren't invited. Well, hon. They weren't invited. Forrest Gump said it like this. Stupid so, is as stupid does. But it's like her whole rant only makes sense if you, if that, if that was about uh, Christine and, uh, Chris, Robin and Cody's Christmas. I'm getting all my names mixed up. And but then she's like, but she's like yelling about the kids. And first of all, it was it was painful to watch because you go like w once again she's dragging the kids. You know, those kids know it. What? Yeah, you mean the kids who got on who did interviews saying how sad and disappointing it was, but it was good to be with the people who actually love them? Or the kids who uh, didn't get a call or anything for Christmas? Yeah. Okay, so... Oh, man, I want to apologize for this. There is only so much we can do for such a bad episode. And it was... Well, let me tell you. We're still... We have a half page. I know. Okay. And then Cody goes I'm on sorry. and on and says about how I've given so much. I've done so much. I have nothing else to give. And I would have loved... The dude is just spent from working so hard and neglecting his wife's and children. So... What did he do? Answer me that. What did Cody do? I just, I just said it. Well, neglected his wives, neglected his children. What is like, pencil with Robin? As near as I can tell, the only person who has done anything was when Christine sat him. Did you want to no, say no, something? No, no, no. Go ahead. I'll, when Christine sat him down at a restaurant to say, "I am driving my children to Flagstaff. Would you like them to come over?" And he kind of went, "Yeah, sure." That's all that I saw him do. So if other people make an effort, he seems to begrudgingly accept it. But I have not seen any evidence that he has reached out or tried to ha present an olive branch, which oh, Robin claims Lord. she did. But no one will say anything. Like, I feel like when Robin, when, when Janelle and Christine and even Mary 50% of the time, present a situation, they give dates, they give facts, they say Christmas, they say this, they, they say just don't this make what stuff happens. Up. But what re people really care about is on this episode, Cody didn't wear gloves. Oh, okay. I'm glad you interrupted my, my thing for that. So, um, so I'm just like, no, the, Cody says things like, I, oh my gosh, why does this keep? Well, you could shut the lid, but you know. I, I mean, I guess I'm going to. I don't need people to look at my face. I think my Facebook was open. Um... The, the post was from a stand-up comedian that I follow, so it's okay if the people see it. But, um, no, Jesus, this whole, this whole thing, he's, he's like real quick about how hard it is. I think he thinks that being unhappy means that he is a victim, 
and therefore he's done something that has been wrong. And as near as I can tell, he did what he did was he did it all to himself, and now he is unhappy with living the repercussions of not developing relationships with his his kids, laying down laws that other people didn't listen to, and then instead of or like, not just saying they were and you didn't but follow he, them. But he constantly, for the past two seasons, has been saying things like, the kids have been back and I haven't been by to see them because I don't feel like it. Um, I haven't stellar, seen Savannah because... Stellar dad of the year. I don't want to deal with Janelle. I'm sorry, I think I interrupted you. Did you have something to say? Stellar dad. Okay. So we get one more scene, which was hard to watch just because I was so exhausted. Harder than the rest of it because it all was it, this episode. Okay. I mean, oof. So they're planning uh, Christine's 50th birthday. McKelty is like super on and being really weird. Literally, if you watch Aspen, she's doing this. Like, the whole time. Because McKelty's really like, oh, so we got your birthday party and we're going to do an ice cream bar and are we going to invite... Are we going to invite Dad's mom? Probably not. We're probably not going to add... Well, what he says is... And Dad's best friend. No, no. What she said was even weirder, because she goes, are we going to invite your ex's... Uh, are we going to invite Grandma Janelle, your ex's mom? And I was like, your ex's mom? You're not talking to, like, your BFF. You're talking to about your family. And then Christine gives this whole thing about how, no, she's not inviting Mary, uh, Cody, and Robin. And it's like, of course she's not inviting Cody. Like, we did not need to know that. Of course, she's not inviting her ex. Like, that's so weird. She has no relationship with Robin. And they didn't invite Mary to their second Christmas. So I don't want to hear anything about how Christine didn't invite Mary to her birthday party four hours away when they haven't spoken. You know, and I kind of feel like, and I will say that there was a place in here where Christine said, even if Robin had extended an olive branch, she would have been friends with her because she doesn't trust her. And I was like, you know what? At least Christine's honest. There's some truth in this episode, yeah. Um, so, yeah, they talk about how they, uh, Aspen, Avalon, which is McKelty's uh, child, and um, um, Christine get together to talk about her upcoming birthday. She talks about how she loves doing this. She hangs out with her girls all the time because they're close by and she loves it. McKelty is weird this whole time. It's fine if you like her. I just, I find her, especially the, the longer she's been on camera, the more I feel like She's just playing a part, and everybody else knows it. And I thought that's why Aspen's looking at her funny, because she's, like, bringing up, like, are you inviting Dad's best friend? Oh, probably not. And it's like, yeah, no, she's not. What are you talking... Why are you bringing this up? This is why so awkward and weird. Why are you on this show? You add nothing. Um, and then they have this whole big thing about Christine having this crush on the guy from Criminal Minds. It's fine. I have no, I mean, I'm not, I don't have any criticism for her. It's just not that exciting to me. Although she did say she was going to blush and she did turn, like if you look at her neck and her chest, she is bright red. So she's not lying about that. The most interesting thing I feel, the, the whole episode was infuriating. The most interesting thing is that Mary at the end of the episode in the upcoming sort of sneak peek for the next episode is Mary's going to move her business to, to South Utah. She gives a long speech about how she's not leaving the area. She's not moving. She's not moving away. But we know that she does in 2023. She does move away. So we know that's coming. So it's kind of anticlimactic. She's sick of going constantly back and forth. I don't fully understand why she needs to go back and forth because her business, her, her clothing business, which as far as I know is LuLaRoe, which I thought was going out of business. Um, is is all online but um she says she's constantly going to utah for the b and b and i'm not totally sure what she's doing there but i do wish her the best for as begrudging and awful as i was to her this whole episode her friend jen i do enjoy seeing her friend jen i wish her friend jen would sit her down and be like girl stop being an idiot you gotta this guy is abusive you gotta get over it like he's treating you terribly and she's dreading telling robin she knows cody won't care and uh, there you. And then we see that Christine is set up with a matchmaker. I wish her all the best. That is the episode. Oh my gosh. If you stuck with it this long, we <sighs> salute you. I am sweaty and stinky from all of the like, the yelling and the shouting. But we did it. We got through it. Thank you so much to every person who watches. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for your likes. Subscribe. I guess you're supposed to hit the notification bell. I don't really know what that does for me, but everyone, I, the videos I watch, they subscribe and hit that bell. 
I don't know, you don't have to, but do consider watching our 90 Day Fiance and other content. We would love that. Bye.